Hey there everyone, Hadesh here from LearnCodeOnline.in and of course your YouTube programming friend. Now this video is probably the most important video in this entire series. Yes, of course, every video, every video consists of its own importance, but you will be using this concept in such a big manner and pretty much almost every time you are building any application. And this is going to be the meat part of what we'll be doing in further uh, upcoming applications as well. Now, you might have noticed that everybody talks about a lot that, hey, you need to learn how to use the APIs and this video is going to be the meat part of it. So in order to understand how we can utilize the API, first we have to learn its small brother that how we can take down that and then probably we can talk about it. So let's first of all create a new file into this web basics and then we are going to calling it as um, the basically whole idea is to handle the JSONs. So I'm going to call this as JSON handle.js okay there we go and we actually don't need to have a web page but it's actually better to have a web page in order to demonstrate all these things on console log but it's not like a really big deal we can actually do all these things into a simple uh, js files using the node and previously what we are doing but just since we have this and we are following this let's have it okay so we're going to call this as json handle.js everything is fine and smooth now we need to go back to our browser and I have opened up a website known as JSON Editor Online. Now, uh, this JSON Editor Online, uh, first and foremost, what is JSON? Now we have seen that we do have some objects. For example, let's just have an object and I'm gonna call this as uh, probably student, uh, just like that. And then this is our object. And in the object, we can have variety of things. We have already seen that. We can have something like name, uh, gonna be like, uh, John or we can have an array of objects we can have uh, in this object we can have variety of arrays as well so it pretty much anything can go inside this similar to this uh, this is the JSON which is a pretty big uh, gigantic object and you'll be seeing this JSON almost in this format like this so if I just try to use that notice first and foremost we have got two big objects and we can see that uh, the first one is actually this guy in here, which is info, and the first one is here, which is result, which is also packed inside this JSON. The reason why I have opened this JSON editor online, because it helps us to visualize this JSON into a better format. Otherwise, if I would be getting something like this, it would be so hard. Now, by the way, in case you are wondering from where I grabbed this one, there is a very beautiful website, which is uh, random user me. Uh, it helps you to understand all these uh, APIs and stuff so I picked it up from there uh, but we are not here to talk about that okay so we can see that we have this object and then it can have a result result is notice we do have an array and this array further uh, the first element of this array at zeroth index is consisting 12 elements so we will be later on learning learn that how we can actually go inside each one of them and can figure out like what is the gender and all of that this is the stuff that every programmer does quite a lot whether he is working on android ios web javascript angular react node it it's like no exception is there now let's just see that we have learned this we will be talking about that later on right now all i wanted to say is you will be dealing up with a lot now many times you'll notice that this json object this big gigantic object uh, actually doesn't come as a JSON it many times comes as a string so we need to learn how we can convert uh, simply a JSON into a string as well as a string into JSON now of course we cannot convert any string into it it should be a JSON and this is also going to solve our previous problem which we faced in the local storage that we can have a key and it need to be stored in string so how about that that if we are able to store that entire big JSON object as a string with just one key and then we can use the dot notation to uh, figure out what are the values inside it and stuff like that okay so just for the example purpose let's just say we have a json uh, kind of an object which has a name john and it's gonna have an age uh, probably 23 pretty young and my favorite is active uh, it's gonna be simply true there we go and probably you can add a few more objects or maybe a few more arrays whatever you like to have it's pretty easy once you understand the concept of how you can handle or grab one value from that object can convert that into string and back into object the concept remains same and you can apply that to variety of other things as well so now 
First and foremost, we are going to learn how we can convert this object into a string so that we can store that into a local storage. Okay, task one, which is convert this object into a string to be stored in local storage. There we go. Pretty long assignment, but it's actually rather very easy. So we can call this as simply we can have a variable and I'm going to call this as uh, simply student uh, obj to string to make sure that uh, we do have an existing object and we are converting that into a string. So how we can do that? Now just like we have like local storage, we have document, we do have this JSON as well and notice all of them are caps. Now it has basically two main properties which we'll be using a lot. The first one is parse and the second one is stringify and obviously the name suggests it all. Stringify is going to convert anything that you pass on it into a string. Not basically anything since it's meant for JSON only. That is why we are going to be having it uh, into JSON. So what I can do is I can simply directly pass on this student and that's it. Now this is string, uh, this string object to student object to string is holding a string and we can verify that by simply logging it and I want to check the type of. So let's check the type of this very long variable string object to string, a uh, student object to string and we can use this type of and then we can ask this uh, really long variable. I should have actually uh, stripped it to a little bit, but there we go. So now let's just save that and see uh, if we are having anything. So I think I haven't actually started a live server. Nope, it's running already. So right click inspect and in the console we can see that we are having a string. That is awesome. Now since this is being stored as a string, if I go to the application and storage, notice there is nothing. I can use my existing knowledge of uh, this local storage and can store this student object to string <laughs> into uh, a local storage. Now how I can do that? I can simply say local storage dot set item and it can have a key value pair. So I'm going to have simply student and then I can have this really long thing which is a student object to string really a long name. And as soon as I save that, I will be uh, notice it's already there, but somehow my local storage is uh, not giving me that. So uh, what I can do is instead, okay, there we go. We can see that it is there. So now all that looks like uh, just that uh, we are storing an object and it is displaying it as an object. But the problem is it is a string. We just verified that using console that yes, it is a string. And you cannot apply the properties that we have learned in an object into a string. Things like I can say student.age and it gives me 23. We are not able to do so. Okay. So what we need to learn next up is how we can grab this student object to a string and convert that back into a JSON item. Okay. So what we can do is uh, Let's just say we are going to comment that this is being stored already. So I'm going to just comment that I don't want to store that again. And uh, this is also fine as well. Now let's just say that we have this variable which is really long one student object to a string. We want to convert that back into JSON. So we're going to have another variable const and we're going to call this as uh, simply to JSON. Okay. I know that's a weird name. Uh, but that's what we really want to convert that to JSON and probably student as well. I know that's a weird name. So what we can do, we can again use this JSON and use the method which is parse. Now this parse expects you to pass on a string, but again, not any string. String should be internally uh, object. Okay. So what we can do is we can pass on this really long name, which is student object to string. And that's it. You have now converted that string back into JSON. I know this sounds a little bit weird that why on the first place we are convert we are having a JSON we are converting into a string and that back into JSON. But trust me, you will be doing it so many times in your Angular, your React, your Node, in every project that you will see that hey, this is like next to common thing. Okay. Now, just to verify the things, what we can do is we can check the type of again of this to JSON student. 
And as soon as I save that, I should get an object in my console log. And there we go. Can you see that? At the bottom, we have got this time object. Okay. Now what you can do is, now you can apply all the properties to this and from wherever you are getting it, okay? Once you have understood the concept, uh, you can actually allow all these things. So now what you can do is you can have a log and you can simply say uh, to JSON student and notice as soon as you say dot, uh, you have access of all the things. Probably you want to access the age so you can access the age. And as soon as I go back to my console, notice 23 is being printed here. So that's the beauty of it. Now store it into any local storage, get back from it. You can do a lot of things. Probably you can have an object, store that first of all uh, into a local storage using the stringify, then grab it back from the local storage, convert that back into JSON and display the properties whichever you are interested in. Now this is the base concept of how API work. If you have understood this video properly, then I don't think so you will face any problem at all in parsing any JSON or any API. So that's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.